In our previous video, we discussed revaluing our inventory. The most common way of revaluing our inventory is to add a landed cost for shipping and handling. And in this video, we're going to discuss how we can apply landed costs to our products. The first thing we need to make sure is that in inventory under our settings, we need to have landed costs enabled. So here we have our landed costs. We can set a default journal if we want. So we can, we'll just set this as miscellaneous operations or perhaps we want to have our inventory valuation, but we'll set it as miscellaneous operations. Now, once we have that enabled under our operations, we'll have an adjustment uh, under the adjustments subheader, we'll have landed costs that we can create. Now we can also create these from the bill itself and we're gonna go through a few different scenarios. So first I'm gonna go into products and I need to create a new shipping product that is a type of service so I'm going to create a new product here and we're going to call this shipping and handling. And what this is going to be is a service product. We're not going to ever sell this. It's just going to be a service. And I'll just change this unit of measure to units here. Inside of our purchasing tab under vendor bills, we're going to select that this is a landed cost. And then what it's going to do is enable a default split method. So our landed cost is going to come in, let's say it's a $100 bill for shipping. Well, how do we apply that $100 across the products that we receive? And the way that we're gonna do this is by setting a default split method or by selecting the split method manually on the landed cost. So as a brief description of the different split methods, we have equal, which means that it's gonna divide the landed cost by the units that we've purchased, the different products that we purchase equally. So regardless of inventory, we might purchase 10 of product one and 15 of product two, and it's going to apply $50 to each one. Then there's by quantity, and quantity is going to use the quantity that we purchased of each unit to divide that. So if we, let's say, purchase um, 25 of unit one and 20 of unit two, then more value is going to be pushed to 25 versus uh, versus product two or, or product one versus product two, whichever is higher. Then we have by current cost, and this is gonna divvy it up based on the cost of the product. So higher cost items will receive a higher percentage of the landed cost. And then we have by weight and by volume, which work very similarly. The weight of the product is going to be taken into consideration to um, give more of that shipping and handling cost to a product that weighs more or that takes up more size or volume. So we have our shipping and handling fee. If we go to average cost here, or the average cost product two, which we're gonna look at in this example, if we go to inventory tab, we'll see that we can set our weight and volume of this item. And then we also have the cost of this product. And those are the different areas where we might take into consideration for our landed costs. In our example, we'll just do it by units, just for simplicity, but keep in mind there are other options that you can utilize. So now the next thing I wanna do is create a new purchase order. The simplest example is that we create a new purchase order for vendor one, we purchase a average cost product two, maybe we purchase five units for $30 each, we can confirm this, receive these products into our inventory, and then going back to our purchase order number 11, we're gonna create a bill. And when that bill comes in, there's an additional cost on that bill for shipping and handling. Or maybe we knew it ahead of time, it doesn't necessarily matter. We can add a line here, and we're gonna add our shipping and handling. And under our shipping and handling, we can adjust the account if we want. Maybe we're gonna originally put this into a uh, expense account. So I'll just do a generic expense account here. And I'll set this entire shipping cost to, let's say this was $25 for simplicity. Now I can confirm this order. And you'll notice that there's a button at the top of our screen to create landed costs because this product is a landed cost that we set on the shipping and handling. So I'm gonna go and create a landed cost. And this is gonna add or default some of our settings. We have the date of the landed cost. We're gonna apply it on a transfer. You can also apply it on a manufacturing order. For our transfers here, we're gonna select that warehouse in that we just received our products in. So let me sort this and we're gonna choose warehouse in number 11, which is for PO number 11, and that's the one we just received in. Now, something to keep in mind 
is that you can apply a landed cost to multiple transfers. So if you receive several different units and then maybe your vendor sends you one large shipping bill and you want to apply that landed cost to multiple different transfers, you can do so just by selecting this here because this is a many-to-many uh, -many field so we can add multiple different options. Now what we're going to do from here is we can adjust this account if we want. So we're going to put that expense account back on here. We can compute this and what the com computation is going to do is under our value adjustments it's going to show us that our cost line shipping and handling product which is product 2 for 5 units is going to get a $25 additional cost applied to the average cost of our product. So it went from our original value of 150 to a new value of 175. And one thing that I didn't mention is at the top of our screen, our vendor bill was automatically selected because we did it from the bill. But if we were doing this manually, we would have to select the vendor bill that we were applying for this landed cost. Now from here, I'm just going to validate this document and we'll see that the valuation has changed and a new valuation line was created inside of our smart button. And we see for product two, we added $25 worth of value. We'll look at the total value in just a second, but while we're here, we'll click on the journal entry. And we see that we have credited our expense account for $25. We originally put that value in our expense account, but now we are moving it to our stock valuation account because we're adding the landed cost, which is increasing the value of our inventory by $25 for product two. Now inside of inventory, if I go to reporting and I look at our location, or rather our valuation, and we look at average cost, we see this $25 value getting added. And if we look at the products and we go to average cost, our average cost for this unit is $42.14 now. Based on all of our previous moves, our revaluations, and our landed costs, divided by the number of units that we have on hand, which is $42.14. So now let's sell this unit. We're gonna sell all seven units. We'll just go to sales here, create a new sale order for customer one. We're gonna add some product, which is going to be the average cost product. And we're going to select seven units. And we're simply going to confirm, deliver our goods. And we're gonna create an invoice and confirm that invoice. Under our journal items here, we'll see that we have all the stock moves that we would expect. We have our total value of all of that inventory. And next thing, what we're gonna do is we're going to look at our valuation once again. In reporting, we're gonna to go to valuation. For average cost, we have $0. So there's no value left in our average cost because there's no units on hand. So we have no value. So in products here, average cost, the average cost here still stays at 42.14, but it will be overwritten by the next batch of units that we purchase. So now let's go ahead and try to purchase our product to average cost. So inside of purchasing, I'm gonna click a new purchase order, vendor one, we're gonna receive our products. Let's just do two units for this example. And we're gonna buy these for $30 a unit, which will change our average cost to $30. Receive our products in, and just to complete this flow, we will confirm this bill. Whoops. What we should have done here is add a shipping cost, but we can do that manually, no problem. So the next thing I want to do is just quickly look at our valuation and inventory. We're going to go to reporting valuation, and we're going to see our average cost now is $60 total value for an average cost of $30. And if we go to our product itself, we'll see that there's a $30 value per unit. So now we get a new bill that comes in for the, the average or for the uh, freight or shipping and handling for product two that we just received. But let's say in this example that we happen to deliver our goods and ship them out to our customer before we received the final invoice from our vendor for shipping. So it's very common that you might get a separate bill for shipping. So let's go ahead and sell these products. So I'm gonna sell the customer one once again we're going to select our average product and we're going to sell two units. Confirm this, create an invoice. Let's see, let's deliver our goods first. And then we'll create that and validate that invoice. Now, as you would suspect, under our journal items, we actually just have $60 worth of value going into our cost of goods sold account for now. 
right? Because the average cost of those products right now is $30. It's not accounting for our landing costs. So now let's say we get a new vendor bill, as I mentioned, we're gonna create a bill manually. This is gonna come from vendor one this time. It can come from any vendor though. We'll set a bill date of the 14th and we'll add our shipping and handling fee. Now this time the shipping and handling fee is going to be $20 total. And I can save this and we're gonna adjust this account to be our expense account. Save this, confirm, and we can generate our landed cost right from here, but we did that before, so let's do it from inventory. So in inventory, we're gonna to go to operations, landed costs, create a new landed cost. We're gonna apply it on our transfer in, the most recent one that we received, warehouse in number 12 or PO number 12. The vendor bill is going to be our most recent vendor bill for $20 here. And we can add our lines. So we're gonna add our shipping and handling line for $20. And as I mentioned earlier, our split method here, we're just, we can do equal or by quantity. Doesn't necessarily matter for this because we only have one product on our PO, but let's just do by quantity here. We can compute. And under our value adjustments, we're gonna see that we have an original value of $60 for our units, new value of 80, an additional landed cost value of $20, $10 per unit. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that this is no longer in our inventory. We have already validated and shipped those products out. So we see no move get created at the top of our screen, our smart button, but behind the scenes, a journal entry was created for us. If I click on journal entry here, we'll see the journal entry that got created. We actually added the landed costs and moved it automatically to our cost of goods sold account. So this was handled and you can see that inside of the chatter, this was just created now by um, you know, I'm the user doing it, but it automatically got created. And we'll see the main thing that we want to focus on here is that our cost of goods sold was debited to increase our cost of goods sold by that $20. And our label shows that these units were already out. So we need to add it to our cost of goods sold instead of adding it to the value of our inventory. So the system has handled that automatically for us making all the necessary adjustments so we can have some record keeping to go back and look at the total stock valuation if we needed to, the stock interim received and delivered, all the different accounts are hit, but ultimately what we care about here is that the cost of goods sold was increased by $20. Now I know that was a lot to take in, but um, just to keep in mind, our landed costs can be used to add value to inventory. And the last thing to note is that if you ever make a mistake, the best thing you should do is duplicate this and create a negative landed cost for equal value to cancel those items out. And then you can create a new landed cost for the appropriate value.